Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we've got a Earth to Jupiter transfer window in 156 days and we've still got that contract which asks us to position a satellite in a stationary orbit of Jupiter which is a really tight orbit and needs a lot of delta V to get into and so I decided to build a really big rocket to do it and well the thing is I wanted to turn the boosters of the Nico uh, 2545 or uh, any variant of the Nico you like into recoverable boosters and attempt to uh, get them back so cutting down on the cost of the whole thing we can't really recover the core because it's too far out it wouldn't be fair but after uh, these will only burn for about two minutes uh, maybe uh, two minutes and 12 seconds unless an engine fails and so it's not showing it properly there so uh, 3 minutes and 31 seconds is the core time. The limit for these engines is 4 minutes. So I'm figuring maybe one engine loss and that should be alright. If there's two engine losses, well, things will get dicey on the burn time. Uh, the second stage engines can burn for 6 minutes and the third stage just should, be, should, just should be fine as far as the burn time is concerned, but there are other considerations. Of course, these are the NK33s and 43s, so they're a little bit more efficient, uh, more reliable than the NK15s were. So hopefully there won't be so many engine losses. But anyway, recoverable boosters. Uh, taking a look at what stage recovery actually has to say. Uh, 6.3 meters per second is what the parachutes get them down to. And then we've got floats because uh, so it's got to be going this end down, pointy end down, which is aerodynamically good. The parachutes are on this end to keep the engine safe, and we want them higher above water. I've made them stubbier uh, to make sure that they, you know, sort of have uh, tend to be a little bit more stable in the water once they get down. And of course, floats. And the floats are on infrared robotics things, so they all go out like that. Um, whether that's enough buoyancy or not, I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty wide base when you look at it, with a float here and a float all the way out there. I think it'd be a pretty wide base. It certainly looks more recoverable than the space shuttle boosters and safer for the engines at the top, so I consider that a win. Uh, we will retract that. And, you know, I didn't have to put the float stage recovery would have totally recovered them anyway. This is just to make it slightly more legit. So, yep, recovering the boosters and then we will uh, see about the rest of it. It's costly, it's 129,000. The probe itself, it was just the same as the Jupiter Orbiter, the original Jupiter Orbiter, except I've added more fuel and I think an extra uh, Gemini lander stage. Let's try and get outside and get to the top of this. Yeah, so the same orbiter except we've got, uh, oh, more RTGs. I've just spammed RTGs instead of trying anything else. So, yeah, the probe itself has two, and then we have two on this stage and four more on this stage because they're so cheap. I mean, they're, they're like reaction wheel expensive. So, um, yeah, so one Lunar Gemini lander engine there. Um, I might want to put some RCS ports there, too. And then, of course, the asterisk 2s, one of them there and five of them down there. But, yeah, let's add a... There's no harm in putting RCS ports all over the place. As long as you lock the fuels on the stage above it. And they're using aerosene as necessary. Alright, I'll probably even put some on this stage so that we can lock the upper fuels. Alright, so this will be a thing. Uh, yeah, this will be a thing even before we get to uh, see if our existing Jupiter probes do their flyby mission. So we'll try it out. Nico 3745. Alright, well, I've decided to unlock or, you know, queue up early space stations as a science and I've got to move it above nuclear propulsion. So we do have an extra upgrade point and I'm just gonna put that into R&D. So a little bit more science per day. We're not going to push that though. Uh, so yeah, the rocket is going to be built in 99 days. 
it looks like, I mean, that's obviously going to be in time for a transfer window, but that launch will be the next thing that we do. But I am interested in our techn technological development. So by the time we time warp through the 99 days, we'll have specialized construction, mature solids, high speed flight, and we starting off on advanced jet engines. And then we proceed to prototype space planes, high power electrics, and then early space stations. So what my plan is, is that we're going to try and build a shuttle of some kind, something that can help build a space station. It might even be a tug plus, you know, it'll move space station modules around. We might not put the modules in the bay. It might dock with the modules and then maneuver it around and then something like that. We'll, we'll see about exactly how that works. The key thing about the space plane is I need to be able to bring it down to the runway. And with the space shuttle, I've never been able to do that. I've, I've come close, but I've never been able to do that. Um, we need something that I would be able to do that with, but it's also very time consuming to actually bring a space plane down versus a capsule. So that's another consideration. I do want to get the episodes out to you guys quickly. So yeah, but we'll think about that. We'll examine a system and then we'll have a space station building phase and hopefully we'll have contracts for that. And then nuclear propulsion. Uh, so then we will expand perhaps to Mars and establish bases there. Now by the time we get to nuclear propulsion, I want to integrate KSP Interstellar into this because it has a lot more nuclear engines than just Inerva and it does occupy parts in the tech tree already. So if you see here, we've got, you know, nuclear propulsion here, but we've got all these improved nuclear propulsion, high efficiency nuclear propulsion, which we already have this bimodal one in, uh, fusion rockets. So you, you go like, well, where the heck do we get fusion rockets in all this stuff? Well, it turns out that KSP Interstellar puts them there. And advanced fusion reactions, antimatter power, unified field three, theory. So even though RP0 doesn't say it's compatible with uh, KSP Interstellar, it has the nodes for the interstellar parts. And I've looked at the pricing. The interstellar parts are all very expensive. So I think, I mean, of course, there's no way to tell exactly what price they would be, but this ultra high energy physics is where you get your warp drive from. So we've got, a, we've got it all integrated here. We just need to put the mods in. I'm testing them off to the side to make sure nothing goes wrong because we've been through the series and we don't want to mess up here. Um, but yeah, hi, uh, once we get to nuclear power, nuclear reactors and all that, I think we should uh, explore this possibility of futuristic spaceflight. And uh, we will do that. I think uh, that might be a new phase of the series, so I'll, I'll start calling that like interstellar, uh, interstellar career or something like that. We'll see. Because um, I think uh, people should be aware that we're going forward into the future instead of just dealing with uh, engines of the past, if you will. I should also probably throw in a Merlin in here just uh, for our transition phase. Merlins, Raptors, um, I'll, I think Starshine Industries has a Merlin that's compatible with RP0, so that'll be good. And there are a few other engines that are worth, uh, worth integrating into our systems, let's say. So anyway, that's the plan going forward, so that you know that we do have a vision for the future. But uh, here we go, let's time warp and we'll launch that uh, Nico 3745. Okay, we've completed the Jupiter Orbiter, but we have to wait for the transfer window. And it occurs to me that maybe we should upgrade our runway. That's going to take some time. And we don't want to be limited to 40 ton vessel weight here, or the sizes. And it's only 75,000, so it's worthwhile. Let's do that. And uh, 800 tons will definitely be enough to uh, test a fairly big uh, orbiter or any sort of, I mean, yeah, I mean, 800 tons will cover it, that's for sure. So, yep, runway, it's only 17 days, so that's pretty quick. They really paid that runway. Also, it'll be nice to not have a bumpy runway anyway. So, yep, we've got, uh, we've got it made, basically. Let's take a look at our other buildings to make sure that there's nothing else we should be upgrading at this point. Start administration, we can have one strategy. I, I don't care about that actually we can save that money that's fully upgraded research and development um, eventually we'll hit a science limit and we need to spend two million on that but we can't afford that right now 
Um, right now, uh, space plane hangar. It doesn't seem like spending any money will help on that. I don't know what the two hundred thousand is for. Uh, we can have, I guess, unlimited contracts if we upgrade the mission control. But I haven't needed more than seven so far, and. There's no apparent reason to upgrade the VAB. I think somebody mentioned something, but I forget. Patch Connex visible on map. Oh, unknown orbit uh, object tracking. We need to save up. I don't want to spend the 500,000 right now, but I do want to do asteroid stuff. That would be good. We need to look into that as well. But not right now. I need to remember to do that. Uh, perhaps a uh, contract will remind me. But I guess we'll only get the contracts once we've unlocked that. So that's the rub. Yeah, we have some interesting contracts. The most interesting ones are to do with uh, Mars. And um, I wonder if our existing Deimos probe can handle... Well, it's the trivial amount of uh, funding anyway. But yeah, lots of uh, Mars stuff you can see here. So, but we have to wait until the Mars transfer window in 502 days. But I do plan to try and pick up a lot of those Mars contracts. There. All right. Let's just proceed to the Jupiter transfer window. Okay, I've started to roll out the rocket, but for heaven's sakes, five days, 23 hours, basically six days to roll out the rocket. I'm sorry, but no space program would roll out, take six days to roll out a rocket. And now this is a big rocket, obviously, it's bigger than a Saturn V. But, you know, Saturn V space shuttle, they still wouldn't take even a fraction of six days. I mean, a very small fraction of six days, but this is ridiculous. I mean, come on. This is, this is, but good thing I decided to start rolling it out. Uh, more than seven days before the Jupiter transit window. I, I gave myself a week just in case. But yeah, it, it's a little bit over, overboard here. Well, this rocket doesn't just take a long time to roll out. It takes a long time to load up. But it does look good, sort of. I mean, if you accept the stubby boosters and all. Still a good shape to recover a booster, I think. I think it's a good recoverable shape, but anyway, SAS on, throttle up. Oh wait, let's uh, let's go ahead and line up with the moon per usual. Uh, now there is a catch to this rocket. Actually, the entire Nico line, the first stage and the boosters, and actually I think the second stage are all default tanks, so they're not cryogenic. So there is boil off. And we definitely need to correct that inclination. So we certainly want to have the, um, the clamps feeding the tanks. Let's get that going. Toggle pump. While we time warp here. Fortunately, it looks like the rocket is relatively stable and we can do non-physical time warp. Okay, throttle up. And ignition. Okay, and launch. And it's going up. So I, I didn't mention it in the VAB, I guess, but each of the boosters has seven engines, not four. That's why we are at 37 on the, on the launch stage. I'm probably pitching it too quickly. I'm used to it, you know, being at the near physics one-to-one -one pace, but we've got physics lag, so I'm pressing the little smarty SS buttons a little bit too quickly. Lots of, t lots of TWR, but um, that's because I wanted to be ready for the loss of an engine. Just in case. You know, not an engine, like half the engines, more like it. We wouldn't even notice the loss of the thrust from one engine. Also, we don't have any of the Thor avionics units, so hopefully there won't be any wobble produced by the weak connections that that seemed to have. So I don't expect any uh, any wobbles. 
hoping that there will not be any wobbles. I'm trying to tell the rocket that there shouldn't be any wobbles. Okay, throttling down. I should have throttled down earlier. I was sort of expecting engine losses. No engine losses so far. 37 engines are about to release the boosters. Okay, separation. And they are separating. And we will hope that they get recovered. Now on 9 engines, throttle up. sort of a Korolev cross. They're a little bit stubbier than usual. And they don't flip around quite as much. Which is fine. Because we want them back in one piece and flipping around is probably not the best sort of situation for that. I should have put controllers on them though. If we wanted to be completely legit about it. I really should put controllers on it. It wouldn't be much of a mass increase. They're pretty darn heavy. So remember, the cost of this, we'll call it 130,000 funds. We'll see how much we recover with the boosters. Alright, the stage is about to run out, and all nine engines perform fine. Test flight hasn't done anything yet. Makes you a little bit worried about later on. Separation. Okay, maybe not. Let's try it again. Separation. Alright, ignition. Okay, I don't know what went on with the first spacebar press, but I'll take it. And let's get the fairings off now. Hopefully that'll work. Okay, bit tight, but it'll be okay. Let's get some supplementary communications and everything. While we're here... Target the Earth. We've got a lot of stuff just floating around the sun, huh? And activate. Gotta lock the upper fuels. We might need the RCS from this stage here to try and... Well, no, actually we have RCS down here, don't we? At least there are RCS ports. So maybe it can do uh, a wiggle on its own, but... Up here, let's just lock the fuels. Well, even though they're not cryogenic tanks, there's not that much boil off on the way up. The, on the second stage anyway, it seems like everything is pretty much even. We'll see how much residual kerosene there is. Just a tiny little bit. Alright, separation. And ignition. Alright, the five NK-31s, well actually four NK-31s and an NK-39 are lit. Well, our intended trajectory is out this way. And... I want to see whether we can just keep this engine burning. It's possible. I think it'd be alright to just keep this engine burning. That'd probably be the best deal. We're right here right now. desired orbit. Zoom out, zoom out, zoom out. It's like that. So we really do want our apoapsis on that side anyway. Okay, we will continue burning with this rather than restarting it. Restarting is always, you know, a risky business. Okay, we've made orbit and we've got about 1700 meters per second left in this stage and we're just going to continue using it.
Okay, that's it. They're all down. Um, let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got some exclamation marks. Uh, so that right there is the NK15. That's the core. That's the core. Uh, here we have a recovery and at 8, point, 8 meters per second, 8.09 meters per second. I thought the stage recovery had said 6.3. So I'm a bit disappointed by that. But we've got the floats, we've got the engines, seven engines there. Um, but yeah, we need to put more parachutes apparently. Um, out of a possible 14,000, we got 11,829 back. So yeah, recovery percentage only 83%. But yeah, I mean, that means, let's see, did we get the others? Parts scrapped. Two damage to be reused and were scrapped. So, oh, I guess um, that's the exclamation mark. So these parts were not reusable. Okay. Uh, so we'll probably have to get more parachutes on and then we won't have this problem of parts being scrapped. And so we recovered, let's say, well, it's about 12,000 each, so 40, let's call it 47,000, 47,000 out of a launch of 130,000. Oh, we lost an engine on that one. This one, we lost one of the engines too. Still an engine there. Okay, well, there you go. All right, I think we should separate. And there we have it. Okay, this has a four hour and 10 minute orbit. And let me plot for Jupiter. All right, we have an approach, but there's no way we're going to make this particular orbit around Jupiter. We are still about 3000 meters per second short. But for now, we can attempt to get a probe around one of Jupiter's moons, I think would be a good idea. Right now I'm aiming for Europa. Could be Ganymede or Callisto. I don't think we're gonna get Io, we'll see, but it'll be for science, obviously. So we're going to try and hit some of the moons, and we've got, I believe, the field to do it. And we'll take about a thousand from the upper stages to finish this transfer. And after that, they'll have about 7,000 meters per second left, uh, not including the probe zone fuel, which I don't have a number for. So, yeah. This should be interesting. We'll have to wait four hours. There'll be some boil off of the liquid hydrogen in that time and hopefully it won't be too much. Okay, we are approaching the burn point. We are currently over, well, the Pacific Ocean, but close to the West Coast and Mexico there. So we do have good communication. That's excellent. And now I'm gonna turn on RCS. Okay, why are those firing? Hmm, there's some fuel I haven't locked. There we go. All right, just these, please. That's why we have the fuel tanks here, and they have plenty of fuel for this purpose. All right, here we go. Throttle up. And ignition. We did lose some Delta V. We lost about 400, it looks like. Or, uh, no, actually, maybe that locked tank took out some. I think, I, don't, I think we only lost, like, 100. I think the locked tank, yeah issue had an impact but that means we have less up there than I thought okay so obviously an interesting burn it's not quite prograde it's got the, a little bit of a normal component so that we sort of shove our node I forget whether it's ascending or descending um, the other side must be descending because we're descending on this side I think that's how it works anyway uh, shove the node at the encounter area. Okay, we are now, uh, well, the little thrusters are going, but I really want to get on to the next stage, so let's unlock that and check everything. All right, staging. And insufficient avionics. Well, I can still ignite. And it looks like we're just like one uh, point one eight tons over, so that'll be all right. There we go. Unlocking controls. 
interesting. I wonder where I got the point when I probably it's because of the extra RTGs. I slapped those on after I sized all the tanks, that's why. That's a good point. Really, I could have probably dropped one of these controllers as long as we're pointing in the right direction generally. It would have been fine and nothing should have knocked us off that. And one of these controllers takes care of about 10 tons. Uh, no, but then I don't think we'll be we'll be down 10 tons by the end of this burn. This is probably safer. Okay, well, our uh, trajectory will be quite a bit off because obviously it was not all done right at the maneuver node. Then again, Jupiter is big. That's a bit closer than I wanted. That's more of an Io sort of situation, but we would take a little bit more delta V to match Io's orbit than Europa's. So um, maybe let's back off a little bit. I really want the periapsis to touch the orbits and of course to be in the same plane. Okay, that's good enough. So we can use this rocket to fling 19 tons to the Jupiter system. Uh, on a flyby. That's quite a lot. And yeah, a pretty good uh, resulting trajectory heading out there. I don't know if it comes close to anything. Not really. And of course, uh, we aren't quite at the Voyager time frame yet. We were about seven years before Voyager would happen, and we need to make sure to send a good probe for that purpose. Maybe many probes getting a good assist from Jupiter to Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. Uh, this is only going to take two years and 98 days, but I want to make sure that we do a maneuver well ahead of that. But it's an interesting point when to do the maneuver, since as you can see, our descending node is right there. And I'm going to add a maneuver here and see what happens. So that's, that's more or less matching orbits with Europa. 6,400. Well, and that's after an adjustment of 81. And we'll have to have some maneuvering fuel. Let's see. 6,700. And then I've still got the fuel in the probe locked. So we could go there. We could aim for Europa. Let's, let's uh, have that be our plan. So I'm going to add this alarm for that maneuver and we will assume that this is our use of this particular Jupiter transfer window and now I'm going to turn to our Jupiter missions already in progress and their approach to Jupiter. Okay ladies and gentlemen we have entered Jupiter SOI with this probe and our goal is to just get below 20,000 kilometers and our current periapsis around Jupiter therefore is 4,443 kilometers so quite good as long as I'm, I'm just gonna time warp through it uh, it's uh, another 82 days and we're not building any rockets so it's not great but I really want to get this done to make sure that we get the get the credit for it and I'm just going to bring it into orbit around Jupiter. Okay, well I tried to engineer some sort of pass at Saturn, but the timing really isn't right. On the other hand, I managed to get a Ganymede flyby. I can't really do anything else except for flyby. We'll be going pretty fast and we can't get into orbit around it because, again, we have to get low over Jupiter. In fact, I could have done more to get a Saturn encounter if not for the fact that our contract requires us to get below 20,000 kilometers at Jupiter. So that does limit us a bit, but we can potentially get this flyby. Ooh, I think I might have been running this game a little bit too long. We'll see how it holds out. I don't want to restart right now. But okay, I'm gonna just time warp through the 71 days until this maneuver, and then we'll have our Ganymede encounter in 76 days. Okay, we are approaching our node around Jupiter. Our signal is going out this way, so Jupiter will not block it. That's good. Excellent, in fact. I am, uh, well, I really should be doing all the things right now, but 
really it, it, the things that I'm doing around Jupiter are uh, immediate. They don't have the signal delay, but uh, just just know that I thought about the signal delay and I would have been doing all the commands right now preparing for the signal delay, but it actually isn't necessary. Oh, something just exploded. What just ha- oh... I think, um... I think getting this close to Jupiter might not be the safest thing for certain parts? Why? Okay, what happened? Able avionics package exploded due to overheating. Okay. I mean, uh, well, the more you know. So apparently getting clo this close to Jupiter is not good with the Able Avionics package in particular. Normally it's the fuel tanks that explode, but apparently uh, the Able Avionics package is particularly not good. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, we should have fulfilled the contract. Now we just have to... That's a stationary one. We just need to do some sort of experiment. Okay, um, that's fine. We still have communication. Did I, uh... RCS is on. We can make orbit around, around Jupiter anyway. Let's go ahead and... Hmm. It says I don't have... Oh, I've, I've locked the tanks, that's why. I was wondering, why don't I have uh, the ability to throttle up anyway? Oh, the throttle up doesn't work. Mech Jeb is not working, but I can do this. Still want to make orbit around Jupiter. Let's see, uh, do we have... I, I don't know whether it's really gonna do stuff, so log observations, log barometer data. Once we capture, we'll do the high over Jupiter ones as well. I don't know if this is low over, but sure seems pretty low if it's going to explode my able avionics core. In any case, I think we'll get something done here, even though it uh, popped a nasty surprise on me. I wonder if time warping uh, so close to Jupiter caused the able avionics core to explode when it wouldn't have otherwise. It's a thought, but I think it's just, we'll check in the VAB some other time about its heat tolerance. Actually, we just need retrograde, not that, we're not going to hit that Ganymede now. We don't have the Delta V for that. Our current orbit is 57,000 meters per second, 57.9 kilometers per second because we're going so close to Jupiter. Oh, we've lost connection now. Well, we already asked it to do the science before we lost connection, so it should be all right. We just can't transmit it back yet. Okay, we've definitely captured. I'm gonna use up to half of our fuel in this to bring our orbit down and orbital period to a more manageable level because right now it's a little bit too long. Okay, 90 day orbit. I'll call that good enough. We have a signal. All right. Um, where, where did our signs go though? For some reason the science windows all went away. Shoot. We had all the science done. And the science windows decided to go away. No, I don't want to add an extra signal delay. Oh, review data. Oh, great. It's going to take uh, ages to review data. Okay, uh, well, transmit that data. I wish I could review all the data without clicking them individually. We have fulfilled the contract, by the way. Very important. Transmit. Actually, I just noted that um, the science is highly biome-dependent. At least the gravity scan said southern temperate bands. 
So if we're over a different biome over Jupiter, we would get different science. So surface info does not have the biomes. Um, yeah, I really need to add biomes to surface info landing. Okay, well, there we go. Southern temperate bands, it says. Hmm. Okay. But that's the surface biome. Let's go to a high position in orbit. Hopefully not time warping too much here. So there's the potential for quite a lot of science around here. And we haven't even gotten to the moons yet. Unless, you know, uh, okay, well, at least we're getting high over Jupiter. The southern t temperate bands are like a huge chunk of it. It could be that, you know, there's only like two biomes or something. Okay, transmit that one. So our reputation has recovered thanks to the success of this mission. We're getting a reasonable amount of science, though I'm still suspicious every time it tries to upload data, whether it's actually recording it. Okay, good enough for now. All right, so, well, with the success of this mission, I think it's successful, even though we had that explosion. Uh, we'll look into trying to meet up with some of the moons, if we could do something at Apoapsis to uh, finagle an encounter, like right about there with Ganymede. Uh, we'll look into that. But next time, I guess we'll be doing aircraft and space planes and looking into those possibilities since we unlocked so much of that science. Yeah, hold on. Yeah, so maybe space planes next time. The other thing that we need to do is, um, well, there's another Jupiter Orbiter mission, and then looking at our Mars missions. All right, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.